we're back. Okay, thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Mercedes, for coming. I really, I really appreciate it. It's an honor. Thank you, thank so you for having me. Oh no, I'm. Thank you for saying yes. It's very <laughs> excited that you did. So Mercedes is in the Netherlands, you guys. <laughs> so, so she's up late with us. And then she'll be back up at 3 a.m. to pray. Right. And Kelly, you'll have to do the math for me. I don't know what <laughs> time that is. I just see it come on and I come on. Okay, so let me give you your introduction here. So Mercedes Moden is a daughter, a wife, a mother, a mentor, a conference host, and you do a lot of conferences. I see them. And Paul's to the nations. She's a prophetic intercessor. I think I can definitely attest to that. A life coach, an ordained minister, operating the office of a prophet. Mercedes Moden also operates in the apostolic sphere as an evangelist and a prophet. She is the founder of Breath of Holiness Worldwide Outreach Ministries. She's a senior pastor of Royal Crown Church and, of course, Mercedes Moden Ministries, Global Business Convention, and the Pursuit of Divine Purpose Empowerment Conferences. So very busy, impactful, influential businesswoman and author and speaker and a prayer warrior. So Mercedes is the author of The Business and Financial Wealth Creation, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life Against All Odds, and the book The Prayer of a Bitter Wife. I must tell you, when I was looking at this, I'm like, this is going to scare my husband if he sees this title. <laughs> I put it on the coffee table, I cover it up. Like He's going to think something's wrong. <laughs> you know, because you leave it out as a message, you know, right on the counter, you know, then it's a message. That, you know, I'm mad at you. <laughs> okay. And then another book, Tragedy of Spiritual Blindness, The Jewels Series, and Growing Through Trials. Mercedes is the visionary of the National Prayer Chain Movement in the Netherlands and a well-known conference speaker in both business world and the Christian circles, always exalting the name of Jesus. Um, and she and her husband, Pastor John Moden, continue to raise new generation leaders from all over the world. And I would say that's true. So welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> that's quite... Uh, I will I say the same thing, Sherry, because when my husband first heard about the, the title, he's like, is everything okay with the prayer for me to wife? <laughs> well, I wasn't sure um, what it was going to be about. So I was like, I'm really scared to get this book. <laughs> I was, but, you know, I was like, I just wasn't sure. But I, as I went through it, and I'll, we'll talk about this first, you know, it has, it's to women of all, you know, to single women, women that are engaged, women that are married, women that have suffered betrayal and, you know, on and on. So Joy might like this, but <laughs> about, about not looking for the man. I let's, where did I find that? You know, not looking for the man that God actually brings him. Literally, you wrote it in here that God brings him. You don't have to look. Because you, what was the story in Genesis? Do you remember in your book? Of course, it's in Genesis. God created Adam and then he created Eve. Right. Yeah. Is it the story? <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, because uh, I, is it with the read one way? You know, Adam was asleep. Well, and... he, yeah. God brings him the woman, right? Right. He, he didn't absolutely. have to look. He didn't have to right. look. Right. And present it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I thought of joy. <laughs> <laughs> only because I thought of all my daughters, only, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, because I was reading it, I was like, okay, this is like to all women. And then in the back, you have 10, you have 40 day fast and it's right. um, 40 days fast in his presence. So it's, you know, it's got everything. Prophetic declarations. Like I like the structure too, the structure. So if you guys are looking at structure of nonfiction books, you know, you have scripture, then you have prophetic declarations, so decrees, and then you right. have prayer confessions, and then you have really powerful prayers in the, the rest of the book, too, that I was like, okay. So as I was reading it, I was like, okay, I'm saying, I'm praying then. Because it's just, it's really good. It's really powerful, really impactful, I think. Yeah. And one of my favorite part of, of, of the book is actually 
the, the message to the side cheek. So it's really for everybody. So we've seen a lot of people when they read that side, they say, okay, you know, I didn't know I was operating in some kind of error, you know, mm-hmm. side cheek and they dropped those relationship and, you know, so side I really cheek. Love- oh, side chick. Side yeah. Chick. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is a cheek. Here, this is a cheek. Oh, really? <laughs> so it was really, cra- it was, re- it was really crazy. Yeah, this, yeah, quite interesting. Yeah, so it has been. Oh, uh, the feedbacks have been quite interesting, actually. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it has. Mm-hmm. So. I want to remind everybody to take notes and then write down question to ask her at the end so we, we don't forget to do that. Okay, so if hindsight's 2020 and what a 2020 we had and are still having at this point, <laughs> what did you personally learn during the whole shutdown thing? Wow, that's it. Yeah, great. And I still remember one, you know, one afternoon and we were sitting or sitting uh, together with my husband and watching the news about, you know, the COVID outbreak and everything and that, you know, something happened in China and maybe some, you know, they might have found, you know, this, you know, it, uh, you know, it, it, we're just watching and all of a sudden. And then there was the breaking news in less than half an hour. From the first news, from the from the first announcement that they spotted COVID in the Netherlands, and then they were shutting down cities, they were shutting down, you know. And and at that moment, I, I just felt like, wow! But it was really it was really strange. But there was there was just this moment of praise and reverence to the Lord, like, wow, God, you are so powerful. Look at this powerful, or you know, this you know, this world, especially here in the Netherlands, we they are quite structured. We have almost every everything and you know we depend so much on ourselves and and all of a sudden there was this fear there was this insecurity I'm like wow the earth indeed is of the Lord and the fullness thereof and all of a sudden the whole world is dealing with an invisible enemy and you know just only a few months before that they were worried about this nuclear weapon and all this kind of weapon and everything we need you know, with uh, north or south korea and everything and all of a sudden you're not dealing with an invisible enemy and that even your nuclear weapon your resources cannot deal with the scientists couldn't figure it out i'm like wow lord Thank you. I, be, I don't believe that God sent it at all. But I just feel like, Father, wow, we now we need an, you know, an invisible God to deal with this invisible enemy. So there was this reality of Christ that just came up really weird, weird, strange. But that is how I actually saw it. And, and the word of God came alive again uh, in a different way. And of course, we we have been on the on the war and the gaps in you know ever since daily to just intercede for the nation. But there was this sense of urgency, like wow, God, you know, so many times we think we got, you know, we we can handle everything, you know, our resources our connection but now looking at the whole world feeling helpless and not knowing what to do and dealing with this really invisible enemy threatening the world so, and and there was just that sense of joy looking at like wow the priority of men people like wow is this all there is so that urgency to just reach out there you know the law for to reach out to people you know to the to the nations so for, for evangelism evangelism for so when it just came back that reminder again like wow now especially here in the you know within europe you know like so what will it profit a man to gain the whole world but then to lose their soul now there's covid everywhere uh you know we, we saw a lot of people uh, you know just drop dead because there were festivals going on at that time before we knew that the, it was kind of a serious issue and lots of death all of a sudden like like I said earlier, Holland is a very small place. It's a very, very small country. So even 10 deaths was just too much. 10 and 20 and 1,000. And we see the fear in people. I'm like, wow, when you talk about Jesus Christ, you guys don't want to hear about Jesus. And now all of a sudden, then you ask the God, where are you? So it was like... The word of God come alive for me that again, you know, yeah, 2020, of course, it's going to probably sound really creepy, but I re- I also had a wonderful time just spending time with my husband. We didn't have more time. To, we normally do spend more time together that much because either we're traveling or he's traveling or things like that. And with the girls, and it was really nice. So <laughs> I think a lot of people experience that where they finally we're spending time as a family 